Hi friends, it's Anthony from the Saugus Fire Department again. We're back here at Saugus Fire Department headquarters uh, after we made our first video last week to entertain the viewers at home that are stuck in semi-quarantine. Uh, we thought maybe we'd grab some of our other stuff and go through some more uh, of the tools and training and things that we do around the firehouse on a daily basis. Uh, today with us, uh, we have Andrew McDermott, a uh, good friend of ours. He's been on Saugus Ladder 1 for almost eight years now and he's well versed in all these tools. Uh, some of these stuff that we recently got is uh, the battery powered Jaws of Life, cutters, and some different type of ram things that he's going to go through with us and show them how they operate. Welcome back to another episode of This Old Fire Station by the Saugus Fire Department. My name is Andrew McDermott. I'm a firefighter here on Ladder 1. I'm going to go through the tools we use on extrication, motor vehicle accident extrication. Our job as the fire department is to show up at a motor vehicle accident and make sure we can get all the patients out of that vehicle safely while also keeping ourselves safe. The first tool we have here is called what we call the jaws of life, okay? They're a set of spreaders that we use to manipulate the metal to make openings large enough to get victims of. The second tool we have here is a set of rams that we use to open things more in enclosed spaces, tighter stuff. It's like a piston, like a car jack that you would use to lift a car to change a tire, but on a much larger scale. The third tool we have here is a set of cutters. These cutters have a pounds per square inch that is so strong it can cut through any metal on any car that's out there. The fourth tool we have is a set of cribbing, basic wooden blocks like you kids use at home to build uh, buildings and that sort of thing in your house. We use these to protect our firefighters when working underneath the car. If we lift it five feet in the air, we gotta keep it at that height in case something fails. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use these tools in multiple ways, show you the way we train with them, because we can't just cut any car up. So we're going to use these tools in training exercises. You're going to actually get to see these things in use. Enjoy. All right, before we begin our training exercise, just like you at home, anytime you help your parents with a chore or anything like that, you need to wear protective gear, what we call PPE, Protective Personal Equipment. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is wear my helmet. Make sure I protect my head just like you would anytime we're at an accident scene, just like you would ride a bicycle, protecting your head with your helmet, we wear our helmets. Next, I'm gonna protect my eyes, wearing safety glasses. The last thing I'm gonna do is put on my gloves. These gloves are gonna protect my hands from any minor cuts or abrasions. If you look, these gloves are special extrication gloves. We have a, a hard plastic that's on the back of them protects my knuckles, protects me from any damage that a vehicle may cause. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take these spreaders, we're gonna play Jenga. You kids ever play Jenga at home? Same concept, we're gonna try to pull these blocks out, restack them up on top, working on our dexterity, our ability to manipulate the wood and the tool in the way that we want it while still staying under control of the tool. We're gonna turn it on, green light means go. We're gonna open the jaws up, see it's spreading. We're gonna come in, I'm gonna close in on that piece of wood. I'm gonna slowly pull it out, hopefully not taking the whole thing with it. Beauty. All right, I'm gonna reposition it up top. I'm gonna to make sure I open it. I'm gonna drop that piece down. Next, I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna reposition my tool to this side. I'm gonna open it back up. 
I'm gonna close it back down on this piece, manipulating it. I'm gonna pull that piece up. Slowly, stand steady, good. Reposition my tool, place that tool, that piece on top, open it back up. Third piece I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close in on this piece here. Try to slowly take that piece out. Nice. Reposition. Making sure I stay under control the whole time. And slowly open that piece down there. And that's what we call the Jenga drill with the jaws of life. All right, our next drill is going to be cutting this standard issue uh, metal chair right in half. We're going to use what we call the cutters, fast moving cutters. We use these to cut um, the sheet metal and the different types of metal on your car. So we can take your uh, 1995 Malibu and we can cut it right into a convertible. Piece of cake. So first thing we got to do with all the tools, turn it on, green means go, pick it up, we're going to open these right up, we're going to start with the back of the chair, open it right up, Is how we cut one shear into two. All right, what brings me to the end of this truck here is what we're gonna do is we're gonna take for the last, for the last train and drill here, we're gonna use this ram to raise the back of this truck. Most of the time we use this ram on the inside of the cab to roll a dashboard forward and make more leg room for drivers who get entrapped in the vehicles. Tonight, what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise the back of this truck to demonstrate the power that this Ram has, all right? As the other parts, green means go, this tool's ready to go. So we're gonna start to lift.
As you can see, we've raised the truck up quite a bit, okay? If someone were to get uh, stuck underneath or we needed to reach for something underneath, these few inches is all it usually takes to get something out of there. This truck is an F-250. On average, this thing can weigh 7,500 pounds. That's roughly 700 gallons of milk, okay, for you kids at home. That's a lot of weight that this thing has to hold. So we have to be able to lift it up, remove whatever we need to, and then get out of there. As you'll see when I lower it, this truck has a lot of movement to it. It's important to recognize that if we were lifting this in real life and there was someone underneath it, we would use those blocks that I showed you earlier. We would build a frame like a small house and we would slide it underneath, making up that distance between the ground and the truck. So if this were to fail, then we would be able to keep that distance we've made. If this fails and let goes, the truck comes down on the house we built and, it, and keeps it at the distance we need it to do our work underneath. So that's the ramp. So just to recap, we have our extrication tools. And what do we learn extrication means? That's right. If you don't remember, ask your parents. The homework for tonight is to find out and remember what extrication means. We have our extrication tools here. We have our jaws of life or our spreaders, our ram device, which also acts as a spreader, and our cutters, which can cut any metal on any car anywhere. We learned about cribbing. We had some fun with cribbing. Uh, we learned how to play Jenga with some of our tools. The fun thing about these tools is that years ago they used to be attached to the ladder truck by a cable and needed that cable to operate. We've upgraded now since with a grant from our state legislature to be able to be mobile and take these tools wherever we need them at a moment's notice. All three at once or just one at a time. Sometimes these cutters and spreaders act together as a team and they're able to go anywhere with different people as far away as we need them to be. So, if you guys have been following along with us uh, with our first video, we'll backtrack even further. And if you watch the first video, you'll be able to comment or email us the answer to this question and the first person to answer back correctly will get a free t-shirt uh, from the Saugus Fighter Department. So, in episode one, we talked about all the firefighters gear, their bunker gear, their jacket, their boots, their helmet, their air pack, their gloves. We talked about all that stuff. And somebody asked the question, how much does all that gear weigh? And we answered the question. So the first one who can remember and get the answer to us, will get a Saugus Fire Department t-shirt. We'll be back over the next couple weeks, just like we talked about on YouTube here with some of our videos. If we're here during the day and we can check in live, we'll check in live just to entertain you guys while you're at home doing the right thing. So again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Don't forget to give us a big thumbs up on Facebook at Saugus Fight Apartment, Local 1003. And also come check us out on YouTube now. We've got our own channel, Saugus Fight Apartment. Make sure you subscribe to us, share our videos, come and watch anytime you like. Everyone, stay safe at home.